And with the bang, we have a tremendous night of boxing this upcoming Sunday from Crypto.com Arena here in Los Angeles. On this Labor Day weekend, a special Sunday night edition of BBC on Fox Sports pay-per-view. But before we get to pay-per-view, we have a loaded afternoon and evening. We will start off at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific time on FS1. A very important matchup in the Super Bantamweight division. The undefeated 19-0, 12 knockouts, Raiz Salim put his skill to the test against Mike Plania. Plania only one blemish has won 11 straight. That at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific time. One hour later, we'll transition at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time, live on Fox as we have a matchup between two unbeaten super welterweights. Joey Spencer squares off against Mexico's own Kevin Salgado. And then at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific time, PBC on Fox Sports pay-per-view. What a card we have from top to bottom. In our main event of the evening, we have a man who has been known as the boogeyman in the heavyweight division. At 43 years of age, he's still going strong and on Sunday night we'll be looking for the biggest win of his career. Sunday night from the Crypto.com Arena here in Los Angeles. A man who made history at Madison Square Garden, becoming the first fighter of Mexican descent to capture the heavyweight championship of the world. On Sunday, he looks to get closer to going ahead and challenging for a world title. Ladies and gentlemen, Andy Ruiz, Luis Ortiz, this Sunday on Fox Sports Pay-Per-View here in Los Angeles. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Greatly appreciate it as we will begin today's press conference. To begin the evening at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific time, we have a scintillating matchup. This one in the lightweight division as we have... Jose Valenzuela taking on a very tough and a knockout sensation, Edwin De Los Santos. I will start off with you, Edwin. You are a late replacement for Gisela Corrales. What does this opportunity mean to you as your late replacement as you take on the unbeaten Jose Valenzuela? Yeah, eh, no entré tarde porque me estaba preparando para una pelea la próxima semana, que es el 9 de septiembre en Atlantic City, y me di la oportunidad de que pelearía en PBC con José Valenzuela. 
Good afternoon, everybody. And um, no, I was uh, a replacement, but I was ready. I've been training for two months, and I was going to fight next week in Atlantic City on September 9th. So I thank PBC to give me this opportunity to uh, fight Valenzuela this week, but I'm ready. Edwin De Los Santos, ladies and gentlemen, also very big thank you to Felix De Jesus, our outstanding trainer. Now, Jose Valenzuela, you are undefeated, 12-0, eight knockouts, a knockout percentage of 66%. You've won two straight by stoppage, one over Austin Dewey, and also most recently in April in front of nearly 40,000 fans at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. You dispatched of the Mexican Olympian Francisco Vargas. But do you feel any extra pressure with your expectations rising and the fans are anticipating another memorable performance out of Jose Rayo Valenzuela? Um, no, uh, I just gotta keep doing what I what I do. Stay relaxed, it's my jab, and uh, go round by round. All right, now back to Edwin De Los Santos. Edwin, you know, 14 and 113 knockouts. Do you feel like he's gonna be able to handle your power on Sunday? Bueno, esperemos que él pueda con el poder, porque no vinimos a un knockout. Esto es un maratón, no es una carrera. El knockout sale solo. The knockout comes by itself. I hope he's ready for it. And of course, uh, this is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Jose, do you like the fact that you go from a guy in Cesar Corrales who is typically a mover and likes to fight on the outside, now you're dealing with the guy who has a high knockout percentage, 13 of his 14 wins come by knockout. It's not gonna be too hard to find this guy. Uh, no, definitely, you know, I'd like to thank him for, you know, stepping in and saving the show. Um, I would have loved to fight Corrales, he's ranked, um, but it is what it is, you know. Uh, Edwin is a hell of a fighter, uh, 14 fights and 13 knockouts. Um, but yeah, I think he'll be bringing the best out of me um, and it'll be an explosive show. Assuming you get your hand raised on Sunday, you have mentioned to me that you want to go and take on the division's best. The division's best being a man who is separated uh, just a seat over from you in Isaac Cruz. Are you still sticking with that sentiment that if you're successful on Sunday, then your next fight you would love to collide against Isaac Cruz, a fellow Mexican? Uh, yeah, definitely. But you know, first thing is first, we're gonna give our opponents the respect they deserve, uh, handle Sunday, and then from there we can move on. All right, I want to go ahead, I'm going to jump around a little bit, Isaac Cruz. When you heard the fact that Jose Valenzuela says, if he's successful on Sunday, that he wants to go ahead and fight you, what is your response to his challenge? Eh, buenas tardes a todos, gracias por asistir. Y bueno, yo, yo no le doy ahorita pues, importancia a lo que diga Valenzuela. Yo estoy enfocado en mi pelea contra Eduardo Ramírez. Bueno, hay que hacer méritos para poderme enfrentar. Gracias. Uh, first of all, good afternoon to everybody here that came out. And um, I'm not really listening to Valenzuela. I got a date tomorrow that I got to take care of uh, on Sunday night that I got to take care of. And uh, to fight me, you really have to have the merits to fight me. All right. Now we're going to go to our second fight on Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view this Sunday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific time. Miguel Flores Abner Montes will collide in the lightweight division. Miguel Flores' record, 25 wins, 4 losses, a dozen victories coming by way of knockout. Miguel, what does it mean for you to be fighting in Los Angeles against a man who's accomplished so much in Abner Montes, three-division world champion, Mexican Olympian? How big of an opportunity is this for the man known as El Michoacano? You know, thanks everyone for coming out. It's a it's a great opportunity to add that name to my to my resume. Obviously, a three division world champion, four time world champion. You know, he looks like he's ready to go into the commentator the commentating table right now. The way he's dressed, so it shows you the type of personality he brings. Uh, I'm sure he's confident, but I'm gonna rely on my preparation for for this fight. All right, Miguel, greatly appreciate it. Good luck on Sunday, Abner Mades. My goodness, you look dapper as always. Back inside the ring, your last assignment was here at Crypto.com Arena in June of 2019, after four years plus away from the ring. Welcome back. Fans want to know, they've been speculating. Abner Mott is returning back to the ring. What does this moment on Sunday mean to you against Miguel Flores? Well, thank you so much. First of all, thank you all, man. Like I said, um, I've been saying it. I want to thank each and every single one of you guys that's here because you guys have been part of my career since I started. You guys see me grow up, um, do my thing in boxing, so I really appreciate all the press, everyone that's here. Thank you so much. And what does it mean? It's it's an honor. It's a blessing. It's a um, it's really a dream come true. You know, um, 
Sent from God, uh, the universe. I thank, um, you know, uh, thank God more than anyone uh, for giving me this opportunity because, like you said, it's been four years and a half, and to to be blessed to be fighting in this great card pay per view on Fox. I mean, I mean this is an early early Christmas and early birthday present for sure. Uh, I want to thank PBC Al Heyman, and um, I'm just ready to do my thing. You know, it's. It's, it's, it's something that I've been doing my whole life. I know how to fight with my eyes closed. I can, I can fight at sleep. <laughs> I do sometimes, and you know, it's, it's, uh, it's just, I'm just gonna enjoy the moment. And one thing that we've been wondering is at 36 years of age, for you, you know, we have seen various versions of Abner Mahdes. The boxer, the warrior, the gladiator. What are we gonna see on Sunday against Miguel Flores? You know what? Um, I mean, I can sit right here and tell you that I'm going to be a smart fighter, box, you know, try to pick my punches. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, I am a warrior. I am a fighter, like you said. Um, you, can't, you can't train the hard, and I'll probably end up just, you know, slugging it out with this guy because that's, that's, my, that's my attributes. That's what I do. And if it comes down to that, you know, I train hard for it. I train really hard for it. I know he's ready. I'm ready. And um, regardless, I don't think you've ever seen a boring fight come from myself, from Abner Morris, so it, it won't be the, the different this, this fight, September 4th, it'll, it'll be definitely an exciting fight. All right, thank you very much, Abner. Good luck on Sunday. Now we get to our main event. We will talk to our co-main event in a few moments as well, but our main event, a WBC heavyweight title eliminator, Andy Ruiz, Luis King Kong Ortiz. Let me go to my left, the Cuban standout, Luis Ortiz. Luis, you and Andy have been on a collision course for several years now. Now that we are merely days away until you step inside the ring to collide against one another, what does this moment mean to you? Bueno, eh, ante todo, vale las gracias a Fox PBC, a Jaime, a mi hermano Chede, a Luis de Cuba Junior, eh, bueno, a todos ustedes por, por, por venir. Esto es una pelea que, que muchos eh, hemos esperado, eh, dos guerreros. Eh, tienen el deseo de, de volver a pelear por título. First of all, I want to thank everybody, Fox BBC, Al Heyman, my manager, Casiedo, Luis de Cubas, everybody involved with this fight. And this is a fight everybody has wanted. We're two warriors, um, they're in the ring, and it's a clash that everybody uh, wants to see. It's been a long time since we tried to get this fight going, and it's finally going to be there uh, this Sunday. Andy, this is a moment you visualized for quite some time. I remember you saying that you watched Luis Ortiz fight here in Los Angeles, and your father said, hey, Miko, you're going to fight him one day. Now, that happens on Sunday. How are you feeling heading into the showdown? I feel good, man. I feel motivated. And it's the truth. Uh, the first time I seen Luis Ortiz fight live, my dad told me, look, son, you're going to fight him one of these days. And I'm like, well, which one? What are these big guys? And what do you know? Luis Ortiz. And we're here now, you know? All the hard work and dedication, blood, sweat, and tears. It all, it's all going to pay off, and coming in September 4th, we're going to get that victory. Now we are here in Los Angeles, a city known for producing high-level drama. Luis, you have told me over the past several weeks that this fight will not go the distance. I'm either knocking him out or he's knocking me out. Do you feel and do you stick to that prediction? Sí, 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 sigo manteniendo lo dicho. Eh... De eso se, se, se vive el boxeo de, de, de noqueo o menoquea, para eso entrenamos, para, para ganar, ¿sabes? Y, y lo más lindo que hay es ganar por nocao en una pelea, para eso nos entrenamos, para destruir a nuestro contrario. No, I still maintain that, either he knocks me out or I knock him out, that's why we fight. I mean, there's nothing in sports, the best thing is a knockout that you see uh, on top of the boxing ring, so... It's an exciting fight, and one of us is going to go down, and hopefully it'll be Andy. Andy, is it inevitable that we are going to see a knockout on Sunday here in Los Angeles on Fox Sports BBC pay-per-view? Well, I feel that's, that's what his plan is, you know, just to try to knock me down. But we've been training really hard. If it goes all the distance, you know, if it goes all 12 rounds, it goes 12 rounds. If it goes the distance, it goes the distance. And I feel I'm ready. I'm ready for whatever he's going to bring into the table and to the ring. 
And of course, well, who's not gonna wanna look for the knockout and, and want the knockout, but when somebody goes and looks for the knockout, people make mistakes, people open up, and they, they pay the price. So that's exactly what we're gonna be waiting for, and you know, I'm God willing that we're gonna get the knockout. I saw you in training last week in San Diego, and hearing the thoughts when you were working with your trainer and seeing your preparation, I feel like this is the best Andy Ruiz we will have seen in your career thus far. Your father even told me earlier in the week, he goes, you were one way against Joshua, and you were successful, he goes, but this is even a more better, more refined version of Andy that you're in the best shape of your career. Do you agree with that? Well, I feel I focus more on boxing, you know? Boxing, boxing, boxing. Instead of in my last fight, I was focusing on my weight, how I was looking, um, listening to other people outside of the ring that I should look the part instead of being the part. And coming in September 4th, I'm gonna be the part. I've been training so damn hard to get to this moment and me beating Luis Ortiz is gonna be another step closer for me to become a champion again. And that's what I've been praying, man. I wanna become a champion again, a two-time heavyweight champion. And God willing, we're gonna get that. Luis, the odds makers have you as much as a two and a half to one underdog. Andy is nearly a four to one favorite. Do those odds upset you or do you pay no attention to it? Para nada, para nada. Eh, cada boxeador sabe que, que entrena, eh, entrena eh, un plan táctico para la pelea y cuando llega a la pelea se voltea. Eh, ya dije que poseo hay que amarlo porque es una, algo tan lindo que, que está lleno de sorpresa y, y de eso se vive. Y, y yo estoy bien preparado. Simple, simple. No, I, I don't pay attention to those odds. I mean, I said this boxing is uh, such a great sport. You, I mean, you come in with an idea, with uh, uh, certain things you're going to do, and it changes right away once you're in the boxing ring. So uh, I don't pay anything to those odds. All right, now we get ready for our co-main event. This one is a lightweight title eliminator. Every one of these fights, by the way, are exciting matchups, and this one as a co-main is no different. We have a matchup between Eduardo Ramirez of Los Mochis, Sinaloa, Mexico, taking on Mexico City's own Isaac Cruz. Eduardo Ramirez, you have won five straight, fighting a fellow Mexican here in Los Angeles. Um, tell us about if it's pretty much solidified that we're going to see a war between you two. Primero que nada quiero dar las gracias a todos los presentes, a todas las personas que hacen posible este evento y estoy muy motivado, estoy muy preparado, estoy emocionado de formar parte de esta gran cartelera y creo que no va a ser la excepción este 4 de septiembre, va a ser una guerra entre mexicanos. First of all, I want to thank everybody for being here, everybody that's made the, uh, uh, the effort to be here. I'm motivated, I trained hard for this fight. Um, and it's not gonna, it's gonna be another Mexican war between two warriors that are trained well and have come to give the best of uh, what they have on Sunday. All right, thank you very much, Eduardo Ramirez. Isaac Cruz for you. He pretty much told me, yes, I am expecting a war. You have fought here at Crypto.com Arena last December, a valiant effort in a losing loss against Gervonta Davis, giving Tank probably the most difficult challenge of his career. But for you, are you anticipating another war, this time against Eduardo Ramirez on Sunday? Bueno, antes que nada, nosotros nos preparamos para a venir a demostrar a la gente que no somos unos peleadores cualquiera, que somos unos peleadores reales y venimos a, a, a demostrar que estamos para los grandes nombres también y bueno, nosotros estamos listos para la guerra contra Eduardo Ramírez. First of all, I want to tell everybody that we came here prepared um, so we could show that we're first class fighters uh, in my case and, um, you know, against Eduardo Ramírez we know it's going to be a tough fight but it's going to be a war. Isaac, since your fight against Gervonta Davis, you have become almost this quote-unquote overnight sensation. You have this cult-like following where the fans love you, they adore you. You can't go anywhere without being hounded by fans because of your style and what you've been able to demonstrate in the ring against high-level opposition. What does that response from the fans mean to you as you have gone ahead and progressed in your career? 
Sí, totalmente, ganamos el, el respeto y el cariño de la gente, algo de lo más complicado de, de adquirir dentro de este bonito deporte. Y bueno, ahora que lo tenemos, vamos a seguir trabajando aún más duro para, para responderle de, de, de la mejor manera a toda la gente y darles grandes peleas. Sí, yes, totalmente, hemos ganado el respeto y el amor de los fans y tenemos que seguir en esta jornada, tenemos que seguir trabajando hard. Así que has ganado más fans y más respeto con esto. I'll go back to our main event, Luis King Kong Ortiz and Andy Ruiz. They both come from countries with rich boxing traditions. Luis, you being Cuban, do you take your nationalistic pride inside the ring with you every single fight, especially in this one against a fighter of Mexican descent and Andy Ruiz? Bueno, esto es lo, lo más lindo que yo sé hacer, es lo único que he aprendido. Eh, la escuela cubana desde niño estoy ahí, eh, siendo un guerrero, peleando, ¿sabes? Eh, por la merienda. <risa> eh, 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 me siento bien y, y como ya dije, yo es lo mejor que yo sé hacer. Es la mejor cosa que hacer I mean, since I was a kid in Cuba, you know, I had to fight for my lunch money. So <laughs> I'm definitely uh, set for the fight, and, and that's this is what I do. Now, Andy, we're here in Los Angeles. We know what the Mexican fan base is going to bring like. We're all expecting a ruckus atmosphere. You became and are the only fighter of Mexican descent to capture the heavyweight championship of the world. What does it mean for you to be a Mexican prize fighter? It means a lot, man. All the hard work, dedication, me praying so much since I was young to, to become the first Mexican heavyweight champion of the world. And thank God it came, it came true when I fought Anthony Joshua. And this is exactly what I want to do again, man. This is, like he said, this is the only thing that we know how to do is box. I've been boxing since I was six years old. Um, never had a job uh, besides working with my dad, and that's not the type of job that I thought of working in for the rest of my life. So I had to work hard in boxing and follow my dreams. Abner, you're making the ring walk for the first time in four and a half years. You're going to make that long walk yet again, a walk where you captured three championships in three different divisions, memorable matchups. I told you this many times before, but it bears repeating. You fought Leo Santa Cruz here twice. The first fight in August of 2015, you guys threw over 2,000 punches combined. A fight that will forever live in the history of boxing here in Los Angeles and for fight fans around the world. But what does it mean for you to be making that ring walk on Sunday against Miguel Flores? Well, it's a definitely a different chapter of my life. You know, it's a def different chapter of my life. I'm in a different position obviously coming back after four years and um, I mean those are memorable nights you know the Leo Santa Cruz fight the Anselmo Moreno when I fought him at, at, at this arena also I mean I, when I was the undercard for Israel Vasquez against uh, Rafael Marquez I mean those were just great fights that I had you know and it's you could just re go back and look, look at them and enjoy them and remember them and memorable nights but Come September 4th, it's just a different chapter, a different time of my career where, honestly, I, don't, I, I have no pressure. I got no pressure whatsoever to look impressive, to, to do, I don't know, like, I don't know. I just don't have that pressure in my mind. I'm just enjoying it. Like I said, I'm gonna walk, make that ring walk, take, take my time, take a few uh, baby steps and enjoy and let, let everything sink in, soak up the, the good energy because uh, you know it could be my last fight so just enjoy it enjoy the moment and once I'm inside the ring it's, it's just it's time to fight I mean uh, we can't keep you know saying it enough us fighters we that's what we do fighters fight and that's what I'm gonna do and it's just a different chapter my man and I'm just gonna enjoy it all right now Luis it's no secret that you are trying to make history yourself. Andy made history for Mexico. You are trying to do the same by becoming the first Cuban to capture the heavyweight championship of the world. This fight is a title eliminator. How important is this fight for you to try to continue to once again challenge for the heavyweight championship of the world? 
Todas las peleas para mí son importantes, pero esta es más importante ya que es la próxima que tengo ahora aquí para eh, el, el domingo. Ah, eh, esta es importante porque, como, como dije, eh, nosotros, eh, el ganador de nosotros, tenemos la posibilidad de volver a pelear por título. Y esta es la oportunidad de ambos. Esa es la importancia. Para mí es, es, es algo grande ganar este combate. No, all fights are important, but this one is especially important because the winner of this fight gets to hopefully fight for the world champion. Uh, to be the you know heavyweight champion of the world, so uh, we know it's a stepping stone. So for me and him, it's one of the best fights uh, or the most important fight that we have in our lifetime. All right, Luis King Kong Ortiz, back to you, Andy. Andy, you did it once before, capturing the heavyweight championship of the world. There is this question surrounding you from fans in the media: Can he do it again? What kind of statement are you looking to make against Luis Ortiz on Sunday night here in Los Angeles on Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view? Trying to make a big statement, you know, not just for my family or, or the fans. I'm trying to make a statement for myself because uh, losing all those titles that I've won on June 1st, it, it broke my heart. And this is another chance literally another chance for me to become a champion again. And I do not want to take I don't want to. I don't want to lose this, you know. So I want to take advantage of this full force and do my best because I want to become a champion again. I feel I need that WBC belt to have it in my collections because I felt like I won almost all the belts. So I need that WBC belt. And beating Luis Ortiz on September 4th is going to be another step closer to become champion. And like I said, God willing, we're going to get that victory and look through the future. Luis Ortiz is. Estamos esperando que es el domingo, que ese es, ya que es el día, eh, mucha preparación y, y hemos tenido y ya ah, ansioso porque es ese día. I'm anxious for that day to come. I mean, we both can say whatever we want to hear, but we got to show it in the ring. It's just anxiety for a big fight and we know what's at stake. Luis Ortiz, as we get ready to let you go, your prediction for Sunday, September 4th against Andy Ruiz, and what are your final thoughts as we are merely days away until your heavyweight showdown? Lo sigo retomando. Yo saco a destruir mi contrario de lo mío de ganar con Vicente. Again, it's to destroy my opponent. That's what I want to do and win in a convincing fashion. Well, he's saying the goal is to destroy his opponent. Andy, you're known as the destroyer. <laughs> your thoughts and your prediction for your clash against Luis Ortiz on Sunday night on pay-per-view. I mean, that's what we're trying to do, trying to destroy each other because at the end of the day, we both have the same dream. We still have the, he wants to make history, but like I said, I'm gonna have my raise, I'm gonna have my hand raised up high and I'm gonna be the one being victorious. We got a great night of boxing coming your way on Sunday. Andy Ruiz, Luis Ortiz in our main event in the heavyweight division. Good luck to all eight fighters, and we'll send it back to Kate and Sean at the desk. You guys can get up there. All you guys can stand up and move around here. We'll start off with Jose first.
писать. Muy bien, Pitbull. Venga, Pitbull. Venga, Pitbull. Right here, first, guys. Right here, please.